Welcome to a summer edition of Gentle Somatic Yoga and some myofascial work to create some ease in the body. And one of the ways to create ease in our body is to activate our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest and safe and social nervous system. And we're going to tune that up a little bit by releasing fascial tissue that might be keeping the nervous system, particularly in the upper body from communicating properly um, to other parts of your body. And when the communication gets fuzzy or blurred, it's not sending the right messages. And that usually happens when we have adhesions or just tight spots. So we're really going to soften things up today. If you have a, a ball, you can slightly deflate a kind of mid-sized ball that can be deflated. This would be great. If you don't, an extra um, mat that can be rolled up can create the same kind of thing. We're going to, at some point, lay on this just to get rid of some of the tension and adhesions around the middle of your body. So this can be really helpful for that. All right, so we'll start standing up, just moving our body in an easy way. Keep in mind that slow is really, really helpful when you are trying to get your calmer nervous system to be, um, more active. Um, fast signals your fight and flight system. It also um, tends to push the calm nervous system in the background. So everything we're doing today, think slow, think flow, um, sense how you feel, and don't do anything that causes your body to really react in a in a fight and flight way. All right, so let's go ahead and draw arms up to the sky over the head and then bring them down. Slow again. Inhaling. Maybe lift the chin. Exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. And then place your hands on your head, interlace the fingers, have the palms facing to the sky. Let's see if I can, no, I think I'm as, I might have to tilt this up just a bit so you can see my arms. Okay. Um, and then lift and lower. Lift the shoulders and lower. Lift leave it up and then just drop one hand down as you gently twist toward the back. Rejoin the hand. See how I have a slight bend in the elbow? Keep that bend in the elbow. Go back the other way. Just opening up the spine in a gentle twist. It's almost like you're rotating the shoulders a little bit gently. So it's like a almost like a little oval movement. Nice. And then drop the shoulders down and then maybe circle them the other way. And interlace the fingers. First interlace them the way that you usually do. The second round, reverse the interlace. Draw elbows together, slightly resist. Let the elbows kind of win as they push away from each other. The wrists are still together. Release the wrists apart. Turn the hands inside out to face me. Lift up and then again, circle one arm, circle the other arm. Notice the bend in the elbow. Go ahead and interlace the fingers the other direction. Draw elbows together, press a little bit, creating a slight contraction. 
a little bit of resistance, not too much to create shaking, keep it slow, and then turn the hands inside out again, lift up, keep the elbow bent as you circle one around, circle the other around, shake it out. Draw the uh, arms out to the side, and then give yourself a bear hug. Draw the arms out to the side, bear hug the other direction. Widen the legs, place hands on the hips and tilt the pelvis forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Now tilt it side, 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 side. Now do the whole circle forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side, smooth it out. And notice if there's clicks, if there's any areas that are clicking, pause there, contract the muscle briefly, and then release it. Let's do the other direction, forward, other side, back, side, forward, side, back, side. Go ahead and smooth it out. Notice if it's moving smoothly. Become aware of any areas that might not be moving smoothly because there may be adhesions there. And those are just indications that you're gonna to need to pay more attention to them and do a little bit of this release work more in those areas. Drop the hands down toward the thighs. Do a few standing cat cows. Notice what areas of your spine want to move and what areas don't want to move. I'm adding in some leg movement to this as well. And then we're going to dip a shoulder in at a time. So we're going to go dip a shoulder go to the other side, dip a shoulder, go to the other side. You will note that the, the, the leg is straightening away from where I'm dipping. Dip and dip. Go ahead and let your let arms go all the way down to the ground. Soften, release. Hmm, breathe. Sigh, ah. bend the knees a great deal. Come halfway up and stand all the way up. Now, if you need um, for balance, a chair near you or a wall, you could have that. Um, I'm gonna grab one to demonstrate, but you don't have to for this. Again, it's gonna be more just contracting and releasing. So I'm doing the this part of the hip on the inside leg. So if your hand is on something, contract that hip. So really feel the contraction and then release it behind. So it's kind of a swinging action. You're not placing the foot on the ground. You're contracting, you're releasing that hip, you're contracting. And then the next time you can go ahead and place that foot on the ground and then come up and down a few times from the um, heel to the ball of the foot, heel to the ball of the foot, heel to the ball of the foot. All right, and now if you are using a chair, you'd keep this hand on the chair. The other hand could start by supporting the back of your neck and leaning over. If you're not using your chair, you're just doing it the ground, lean away from the front leg, over the side, come back, and then open up a little bit. Okay. So if you are using a chair right here, you would face the chair and do a chair dog. If you're not using a chair, just go ahead and do a regular downward facing dog. The chair dog is very effective when you have neck and shoulder issues because it still allows you to get the length of the spine 
without as much pressure on your neck and shoulders. And you can also do this against a wall. Breathe. Walk back toward the chair. If you're on the ground, you could go into a regular mini um, cobra. If you're using the chair or the wall, your fingertips would be there. You'd lift up. You might even engage the whole back body, lengthening the front body. And then if you are using a chair or the wall, you would either turn yourself around or take the chair on the other side. We're just repeating the same thing we did to the other side. So contract that muscle, lengthen it. Feel it shorten, feel it lengthen and shorten and lengthen. Place it down behind you, go up and down onto the ball of the foot. Put the heel down. This is just a warm up for us to get our body, all parts of it moving. And then when you are ready, you'll stay in your warrior one or lunge, depending on which one you prefer. Interlace that hand behind the head to protect the neck. Leaning over the opposite side of the side where your leg is front. Coming back to neutral, opening up, and do that one more time again. Back to neutral and opening up. Go ahead and either go into a regular downward dog or a chair dog if you're doing a chair dog today. Walk away from the chair if you're doing a chair dog, bending the knees. If you're doing a regular downward dog, also make sure that your knees have a slight bend in it. Breathe. Hmm. And whichever one you're doing, either coming down to the floor, cobra or cobra with the wall or chair, opening up the chest, engage. And hopefully you're feeling a little more lively and warmed up, but not too hot. <clears throat> okay. Um, we will do a standing balance and then we're gonna come down into a seated position. And if you wanted to today, some of the seated things you could do on the chair. All right. So since this is a summer version of class, let's do wiping sand off of legs as our balance series today. This is more of a functional balance rather than a balance you might see in a traditional yoga class. So I want you to imagine you're walking off the beach. You got a lot of things in your arms. You don't want to drag sand into your car. So you have placed an old towel on the ground and um, you are proceeding to get the sand off of you. So lift up one of the legs and um, let's start by getting the sand off the front of the other leg. So use the underside of that foot to wipe the sand off. You can even go down the top of the foot. Good. And then you wanna wipe the sand off the back of that calf using the, the top side of your foot instead of the underside, right? Make sure you get all sections, get that sand off. And then you gotta get the sand off the inside of the foot, right? All right, so now you do have a towel down, so you can put your foot down on the towel. You won't get it dirty again. And repeat this to the other side. So let's wipe the sand off the front of our leg and calf. Get it all off. Again, you're imagining you've got all these packages in your arms. Now wipe the sand off the back using the top side of the foot. Get every section. You don't want any sand in the car. And then wipe it off the inside of the instep. Get that cleared off. All right, you should be sand free. Go ahead and Put your weight between both legs. Hopefully you still had your towel on the ground. Shake that towel off before you put it in the car. 
And now you've done a functional balance without, um, without getting sand in your car. And I think it's a great way to balance. So hopefully practice this when you're going to and from the beach this summer. All right, so let's go ahead and in any way you want to make your way down into a seated position. We're gonna do um, several things for your um, parasympathetic system and you've got three zones of it. You've got the head, neck and shoulders. You've got sort of this chest area. Um, and then you've got um, the pelvic area. And we're going to want to release all of these areas, release the fascial tissue. So I brought my little cheat sheet with me. Three zones of your parasympathetic nervous system. So um, during this part of the series, you can change the way you're seated anytime you want. In fact, there's no need to be sitting on the ground if this is uncomfortable, but I am gonna encourage you several times through this to change the cross of your legs or uncross the legs because we are gonna be focusing um, on our upper body for a little bit. Okay, the first thing we're gonna release looks really, really silly and that's our jaw. So <laughs> what you're gonna do is open the jaw a little bit and imagine that um, you're sort of resisting, like your, your teeth are open, but you're trying to force your jaw up just a little bit. And then take your hands, there's a little resistance as your hands are gonna be pulling your jaw down as your jaw slightly res resists, trying to keep those teeth kind of close together. But the jaw is gonna win and you're gonna open your mouth, so it's like, Once your mouth gets to its fullest opening, look up, eyes up, nose up, and let it go. Okay, it looks really weird. Let's try that two more times. Don't do it into pain, but what we're trying to do is release this jaw area. So use your fingertips all around the jaw, kind of not clench your teeth, but keep your teeth like they're trying to close, but you're pulling the jaw down. Slow. And release. One last time. You will feel like, oh, gosh, I've been holding my jaw so tight. Um, take your fingertips, place, place them all around the jaw area. Imagine that you're trying to keep your teeth lightly closed. And you're starting to pull the jaw down as your jaw slightly resists. Look up, nose up, release. Okay, just shake it out. <laughs> Move your jaw around in different ways, okay? So now we're gonna move to um, the next set of muscles that get really tight. So um, you know how you have this indent up here? I think this is your trapezius. Um, so first find it with your thumb, that little indent area, right? You feel the indent. And then um, press your fingers in there, but don't make it painful. You're gonna press the fingers slightly back and up. Um, so whatever side you're doing, once you get that, allow the head to drop down, turn to the other side. You might just, don't go too far. You might play with this a little bit, like release and go back into it. You could change the head. You could look further back. Ah. Breathe through it. Okay, let it go and move that around. And then finding the other side, first find it with your thumb and maneuver it a little bit. So you're finding that little indented area. Then take your two fingers. So you're gonna kind of press back and a little bit up. 
Press back and a little bit up, turn your head the opposite way, kind of play around with how you're turning your head. You could tuck the chin, you could lift the chin. You don't wanna go into pain. You're looking for some sort of release. Move it around a little bit. Don't go too much into this. Do it gently. What we're trying to do is release this stuck tissue so that your vagus nerve, which is your main nervous system, main nerve plexus of your parasympathetic, can communicate better throughout this region. All right, go ahead and re release that. Shake it out. Woo. Move it around. You might change the cross of your leg or how you're sitting um, if your legs are getting tired of sitting this way. So the next one is the armpit. Um, so your fingers are going to be in your armpit. Your thumb is in front. Okay. So now we're trying to loosen this area. Take your hand out directly, your whole arm and hand directly in front of you. You're going to, again, a little bit of a squeeze as your arm is going out. And then once again, your head will go the opposite way. You might feel a little nerve tingling here. You don't want to go into pain. Draw it back, release it. Let's do that another time on this side. Um, arms out. So what we're doing is we're trying to soften this fascial tissue where adhesions are that are preventing the proper communication of your nervous system in your upper body. So pressing in there, letting the arm go out, a little bit of resistance, not too much, maybe looking the other way. You can even find a different spot in the armpit. And coming back, let's go ahead and move that shoulder around a little bit. So this is a little uncomfortable while we're doing it, not painful but then the blood goes flush, flowing back in there and things just start freeing up. So now find that spot under the armpit. Your thumb is sort of on the front of the pec. The um, fingers are underneath the armpit, the arm. Oh, and I forgot, you, we're gonna do one more thing when we go back to the other side. I forgot to have the hand can turn up as you're opening it. So you're going to go out, 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 hand turn up, and then look the other way. So we're going to have to repeat to the other side and just add one with the hand turning up. Release it. Let's try that again. So have the resistance a little bit first. One side you might feel more than the other. Turn the palm up as the arm goes out. Turn the head the opposite direction and come back. Let's go ahead and release this one. And we'll do one more on that side with allowing that hand to turn up. So get back in your armpit. The, the thumb is facing forward. The fingers are under the armpit. The arm is outstretched. The hand is facing in. As the hand goes out and the arm stretches out, turn the arm slightly up to the sky. Turn the head the other way. And let it go. And let's just move around in any way that feels good. Ah, for a minute, close your eyes and just check in. You might have like a little bit of a vibration in this whole upper body because we are really loosening up things. We're releasing held tension, which surrounds the nerves and prevents the nerves from communicating properly. All right, the next one, the arm is going to be bent up like this. And you're going to, so I have my right arm bent like this. I'm going to take my left hand and be very close to the elbow, but not on the elbow. And uh, my fingers are on the outside. And I'm going to um, resist a little bit. So I'm resisting, resisting, resisting as that arm goes out and then resisting, resisting, resisting as the arm comes in. Now, as the arm comes in, fold over, do a slight twist, let it go, and release. So we'll do that two more times. First, you're gonna let the arm go out a little bit. So what we're trying to do is activate muscles on that side body. So feel the activation. 
And then there's still activation as you're coming this way, coming this way, coming the opposite way, and twisting action, soften to the bottom. And let's do the other side, release this. So your hand is on the outer edge of the arm and um, first you're opening it. So you should feel that contraction with the opening. You, you feel all those muscles in the side body activate. And then you're coming this way. There's still a little bit of resistance. Resistance, you're going into a twisting action and then soften down toward the other leg. And I think we did a second time. So first open, 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 a little resistance, and then start to come this way. You still have some resistance. And go all the way down. And let's go ahead and check in. So we, we have activated two of the regions of the parasympathetic system, the middle region and the upper region. We will do the pelvic region in a few minutes, but let's just go ahead and check in and see how our upper region is feeling. Oh. Hmm. So while we're sitting here, you can change the cross of your legs again or a different leg position. And we'll do a heart math breathing practice to um, engage inner ease because this is all about trying to find more ease in our bodies and our minds and our hearts and emotions. So um, go ahead and get comfortable in any seated position. Check in first and notice your, where you're sitting, your sit bones on the ground or the chair. For a minute, you also might want to look around your room to orient yourself. Orienting is a great way to become grounded. So you might have your eyes peer around your room a bit. And then you might even look at your hands or your feet for a moment. And then if you want to, you could close your eyes. You don't have to. And if you want to, you could place hands on the chest. Again, you don't have to. Slow your breathing down. Direct that breath to the chest area. Keep it nice and slow and steady. In fact, if you could visualize a gentle ocean wave, you know how they kind of crest and fall, but not a wild wave, just a soft, gentle wave lapping up to the shore. So imagine your breath is like that, very wave-like. Slower than normal, but not stuttering at the beginning or the end or holding. Breathing in and out of the chest area. So we're going to activate a feeling of inner ease There's a couple ways to do this. You find what works best for you. So some people find saying the words inner ease or peace as a mantra is helpful. Others find creating a scene if you're a visual person where you have really felt at ease it can be a made up scene, a scene from a movie, 
a scene from your own life. And once you create that scene, you could use some of your other senses, like what were the smells at that scene? Did you feel anything like a soft breeze? Even if there was some food or a drink involved, what did it taste like? What were you hearing at that scene? So you're really painting the whole picture. In whatever way you've created this feeling of inner ease, you're now breathing that in and out of your heart center. And then whenever you're ready, just come out of that. So what this shows is really you can be in any situation and then take two to three minutes and transport yourself into a place of ease. And then you're able to carry that ease along with you for whatever you are facing in your day. So we'll do um, more of a regular somatic twisting series before we move on, just because we started activating those twisting muscles when we did the last little um, nervous system contraction little routine. So if you're able to, um, you could have the one leg back and the one leg forward, and we'll move the hip around a little bit trying to create a little ease in that hip movement. Move it in a lot of different directions. Explore this movement, forward and back, circling, figure eight, lifting and lowering. And then if you're um, mirroring me, you might have your left leg forward. If you're, whatever leg is forward, take the opposite arm and place it on the shoulder of the leg that's forward. And if you can keep the elbow tucked against your body, the other hand is slightly behind you and then twist, first time with eyes open, release. And then three times with eyes closed. Twist, feel muscles engage, release, let it go, and twist, muscles engage, and release, let it go, third time like this, twist, muscles engage, and then disengage the muscles. Now you're going to take the opposite hand and cross over to the shoulder of the back leg and do three twists like this. You can do these with your eyes closed. You may not get as far. Twisting, softening back to the front. Twisting, releasing to the front. Last time, twisting and release. Now go back to the first arm, place it on your shoulder again, come halfway. And let's do what looks like cat cows, but you're gonna have your head um, in a somatic way. So my elbow's gonna go up as if I'm doing part of the cat cow, but I want your head to be slightly looking down, eyes and chin a little bit down. And then when your elbow comes down, tucks into your body, I want your head and eyes to look slightly up. So elbow up, head and eyes down, elbow down, head and eyes up. Now take that hand, place it on your knee. Other hand can go further behind you 
and release into a full twist and come all the way back, let it go. Sit on both sit bones for a second, eyes closed, just checking in. Lean forward into somewhat of a forward fold with one leg in and one leg out. Face the outstretched leg, draw the hands behind the neck, open up the chest, close the chest toward that leg. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, close the chest. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Now bend that knee up. Place head close to that knee. Slide the leg away, maintaining somewhat of a connection between the head and the knee. And then come on up, release, and let's go back into a forward fold and see if we've let go of some tension. Nice. Let's repeat this whole sequence to the other side. Very gently set up for the other side. Start with moving the hip. Move that hip in a lot of different directions. Lift, lower, forward, back, circle, circle back, circle forward. Figure eight, all sorts of different movement. Now take the arm, um, that's on the side of the back leg, cross it over to the shoulder of the front leg and twist first time with eyes open, the next three times with eyes closed, keeping the elbow tucked, engaging and releasing middle body muscles and hip muscles, softening, and re-engaging and softening. Third time, engage and release. Now switch arms. The other arm crosses your body and you're twisting and letting go. This is not a big move. Twisting, letting go. Third time, Twisting, letting go. Go back to the first arm, place it on the shoulder, come halfway. Lift the elbow up, look down, engage the back body. Drop the elbow down, engage front body, look up. Lift elbow up, look down, drop elbow down, look up. Release hand to knee, go into a full twist. See how much you can twist with comfort. Let that leg off to the side, sit up straight and tall for a second, feeling both sit bones. Ha, ah, turn to face, oh, well, first fold over and see what's restricting your ability to do a forward fold here. Then turn to face the straight leg, hands behind the head, opening up the chest, curling down toward the leg. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, curl toward the leg. Last time, inhale, exhale. Bend up the knee, create a connection between the head and the knee, start to Slide and glide the leg away, glide it away. And then let's go back into the forward fold and see if we have released some tension. Hands behind the back momentarily, windshield wiper. Open up the chest. So before we get out of the seated position onto our knees temporarily, I do want to go over a cooling breath, which is very effective for the summer. 
there's two versions of this breath you can do. One's called crow's breath and one's called satali. Satali is a little more complicated because you have to um, curl your tongue in and not everybody can curl their tongue. So I'm gonna come close and show you if I can curl my tongue. Mm -hmm. If you can curl your tongue, you can do the satali breath. If you can't, just do the crow breath. And the crow breath is fun anyway. So in the Satali breath, you are curling your tongue on the exhale and letting the air go out through that rounded tongue. So breathing in through the nose, curl the tongue, blow the air out. Breathing in through the nose, curl the tongue, blow the air out. One more time, breathing in through the nose, Curl the tongue, let the air out. Now, if you can't do it with the curled tongue, you just make your mouth into a beak. And that's crow breath. Breathing in through the nose, make your mouth into a beak. Breathing in through the nose, mouth is a beak shape. Last time, breathing in through the nose, Make your mouth into a beak. So both of those are cooling breaths. If you find yourself overheated this summer, they can be really, really helpful. Okay. Um, you might want something for under your knee in this one. We are now moving to zone three of releasing the parasympathetic system to, what's really activating it, releasing muscular tension around these areas so that our parasympathetic nervous system works better. So um, you're gonna be on one knee and then one leg is off to the side. Now, instead of flattening the foot, be on the inside edge of the foot, okay? And you can have this further apart or closer together, but I want you to activate this feeling of um, the inner thighs drawing toward each other. Be careful that you're not locking your knee, okay? And then put your hands on the ground. With this activation, lean back. And then release it. And do that two more times. Again, what we're doing is we're releasing this pelvic area. Activate that area, feel the muscles contracting, put hands in front of you, draw your butt back, and release. Last time, activate this area, draw. It's like your legs are pulling toward each other. Watch the knee, draw the weight back, and release, go ahead and draw that knee in and just move your hips around. So what we've done is we've probably awoken this area because a lot of these muscles, we're just not even sure they're awake. So you have to feel their activation to get some release there. And this is allowing all the communication to work so much better through the middle of our body, which is where our parasympathetic system resides, our safe system, our system that calms us down, allows us to digest, allows us to sleep better, to relax, to enjoy life better. Okay, other leg off to the side, you're leaning on the inside of the foot. Make sure you're not hyper um, extending the knee. That's a tendency I have to just pull that knee back too tightly. Feel the muscles engage here. Feel that engagement. Place the hands in front of you, okay? And then draw the weight back. Feel the activation of that. Oh, it feels so different on this side. Release it. Ah, I am taking a course right now with a woman named Erin, um, and I can't remember her last name, but she is fabulous. And she's teaching me all these really cool um, new techniques. Let's try it again. First, first activate, feel. So you're like pulling everything in, almost like you're holding in a pee, okay? 
Then place your hands down in front of you. Draw your whole body back. Feel the lengthening and go ahead and release it. And we'll do this one more time. Feel the activation of the muscles first. Then place the hands in front of you. Draw your hips back. Feeling the opening and the release. And let it go. Bring your knee in. Go ahead and just shift your hips around a little bit. Shift them around the other way. Now this is where we're going to use either a squishy ball or that rolled mat, or if you ha don't have an extra mat, a rolled towel. You're placing this here. And really all we're doing is we're doing um, a narrow legged child's pose, squeezing this ball under us. Um, so you're just kind of folding over. Now, some people might need something to support under their ankles or even something between thighs and knees, but just come over so that you're leaning on this ball and then go into some sort of child's pose with the thing pressing against you. Ah, and breathe and sigh. Ah. Again, you can tell what we're trying to do is release any adhesions or tension all around this pelvis area, which is your third section of your parasympathetic system. Ah, creating some ease through the activation of our easeful nervous system. Um. All right. <laughs> How are you feeling? Different practice today, huh? So you might want to um, spread your blanket completely out over your um, mat today to allow you to slide and glide a little more easily. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to slide and glide more today, create some slide and glide within our fascial system, which helps our nervous system be able to communicate better. And when our nervous system communicates better, we have a little more ease. So I, I will, take my second blanket and place it under my head as well, just for a little neck support. You could even use a towel or one of those neck pillows. If you have two blocks, um, we are gonna do one more thing for the pelvis before we move into the legs. Um, it's a bridge pose, but it's a bridge pose that has a block between the feet and a block between the knees. So it looks like this, one between the feet and one between the knees. And then you'll lay back and you probably don't want the extra blanket for the bridge pose. Keep your arms by your side, maybe tucked in. Your hands can be either facing each other and just what we're trying to do is sense if we're activating all the muscles evenly from the pelvis through the thighs and down. And you're going slowly and not going too high. But this is a great way to notice where you are not activating muscles like, oh gosh, my left thigh is not as activated as my right thigh in this. Or I'm using, you know, muscles in the right hip and not feeling the left hip or I'm not doing this evenly. You're going for, and once you sense you're not working one thing as much as the other, see if you can turn that area on 
activate it to create a little more ease for the other side, which is doing all of the work. You want an equal amount of work. One last time like this. Go ahead and release the blocks. This is a time to maybe pull knees into chest and do whatever kind of movement feels nourishing to you. I tend to like my ankles crossed and this kind of circling around. Other people like happy baby. Other people like legs in the air. I also do like legs in the air. And what I do is I support under my rear with my hands and I just get my legs up. Just do something that feels good here. Ah, release with a cleansing breath where you're inhaling through the nose, exhaling, making some sort of sound. Now, put one foot on the floor with the knee bent and the other um, knee is up towards you um, with your hands initially behind the knee. So uh, what I want you to do is imagine your leg is pulling against the arms enough so they straighten the arms. So see how my arms are straightened, the leg hasn't straightened and then release it. So pull the leg against to lengthen the arms and release. So what you're doing is contracting and letting go. So again, we contract first to create more softening of the muscle second. And now we'll do a similar thing. Um, when you go up, contract the arms and engage the muscles and then let it all go down. When you go up, so the arms are straightening, the muscles of the legs are contracting, and then everything is softening. When you go up, and you're not completely straightening your leg, and let it go down. Last one is you're reaching for the calf, and just flex and point your toe here, toes. So your leg is completely straight. And then engage all the muscles of that leg, as you slowly lower that leg, keep the muscles engaged, if you can, the whole time. When the leg gets completely to the ground, you're gonna to totally soften. Soften it, let it ro roll out to the side, completely softened. For a second, draw the other leg down, shake things out before we shift to the other side. So bend up the knee, put the foot on the ground of the leg you were working, draw the hands around the back of the knee of the leg you're now working and engage the muscles of the legs enough to pull your arm straight and then release it. So it's like the, the bent leg is pulling away, engage, pulling it straight and totally release. Third time, engage, pulling it straight and release. We're gonna try the same thing now with the leg a little more straight. So now engage the muscles of the leg as if you're trying to straighten, your arms are straightening. Let everything go. Engage all the muscles. Let it all go, soften, soften, soften. Engage and let it all go. Now draw your hands down to your calf, lengthen the leg as much as it will with comfort, point and flex, point and flex the leg. Now keep these muscles engaged, lower, with the whole engaged leg, engaged, 
engaged, engaged, engaged. When the leg gets all the way to the ground, the muscles are completely softening. And now join the other leg with it. Just shake things out, soften things, and find your way into your most comfortable Shavasana. Check in, just notice if you have more ease in your body, more flow, ease in your mind, ease in your breath. So just a really interesting way to create ease. We contract first to activate things and then we soften them. And what we're really doing is we're lubricating the fascial, we're sliding it, helping it slide and glide and get rid of adhesions. Okay, so our, here's a fun little reading from Mark Nepo for summer to uh, help us determine what, what sometimes creates unease in us. And this one is called Here and There. Here is always beneath there. I remember sitting for a long time on the edge of a summer lake, watching the far shore. I could see early light flood the water in the distance, and this somehow made the other side seem so exotic. Every morning I'd sit on my small edge of the lake and watch the other side, imagining that a certain mystery awaited me. With each day, its call grew larger. Finally, on the seventh day, I had to go there. And up earlier than usual, I rowed across the lake, beached my small boat, and sat in the exact spot I had been watching. As I looked about, the aura of otherness I had seen from my daily perch was gone. I was somewhat undone for this, for though this far shore was beautiful and peaceful, the wet clump of shore I ran my hand through was the same as where I had begun. I started to laugh at myself for looking back at where I'd been sitting every day I saw the early light flood the water in the distance. And now where I'd been living seemed so exotic. Now the certain mystery called me back to where I was. So often we imagine that there is more full of gold than here. It's the same with love and dreams and the work of our lives. We see the light everywhere, but where we are and chase after what we think we lack, only to find humbly it's with us all along. So in the last minute, just visualize there, whatever there is for you, and how you've been longing for it. And then maybe trying to visualize here, and seeing how it has all the ingredients of there. If we just change our perspective and create a little inner ease. So this signals the end of our time together today. I hope that all these different things we did created a little ease for you. Um, join your hands together, acknowledging each other as we say, and Sophie joins us, namaste.